Time to measure our ring gap. Now, lots of guys just put them together. They don't measure any of this stuff. They feel that this stuff is pre-gapped from the factory and if it's in spec, it's fine. And you know what? 90% of the time you're gonna get away with that. But if you've watched my channel any amount, you know I'm fussier than that. I take the time to go through this all. So, what we gotta do is take these piston rings, put them in each cylinder, and we're gonna measure how much gap they have. And to do that, we just use a good old fashioned set of feeler gauges. So let me get a ring in here and get the camera set up and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so we're gonna take our first piston ring and we're gonna drop it in the number one hole. That's where I'm gonna start. Now these are labeled top, right? This is the top ring and this is the top side and that's the way we wanna put them in our cylinder. So we're just drop it in like that. But we have to have that ring square in the bore, right? And we don't wanna be measuring right at the top either. We wanna get it down like an inch or so. So you can take one of your old pistons, put a ring on there, and then you can use the piston to drop it down. The ring is gonna catch it before the piston can go all the way down. And so you'll get it in there pretty square and the piston with the ring there will be your guide as to how far it's gonna go down. But again, I do a lot of engines, so I have an actual little tool that I bought for doing that. And this guy, he'll sit with these in the bore like that. And then these feet are gonna push the ring down. But as you can see here, it's not set to the right size of bore. So I'm gonna set that up. So to do that, we just loosen these off. Oh, that one's tight. Get this thing kinda centered something like that, tighten these up. What is, what do you want? I'm doing a video here. <laughs> All right. Might have that a little tight, we'll have to see. Oh, it works, okay. So now those are set to be on the inside of there enough that I should be able to set it on top of our ring. And when we push this down, it's gonna be square now. Okay, so that's how that works. Now we got our ring down an inch or so, and you can see our gap right there. So now you're just gonna take your feeler gauges and you're gonna see what fits in that hole. Now, right now, I don't care what the spec is. Right now, I just wanna see where we're at. So there's a 14 thou. Oh yeah, it fits in there like butter. So we gotta go, we gotta go fatter than 14. We need a fatter one. Next one up here looks like a 16. Uh, let's go straight to 17, cause it's pretty loose. Yeah, 17 fits in there. It actually grabs just a little bit. This one might be a 17. Let's go to the next size up. Oh, 18 fits easy. It all has a lot to do with how you hold that gauge, yeah. 18 fits really easy. Next up is 19. Yeah, that one fits. Let's go to a 20. 14, where are we at here? On the wrong side. Okay, there's 20. Well, that one don't fit in there. So 20 doesn't fit. Nineteen does. So it's a nineteen thou ring gap on that top ring. So now I'm just gonna write that in on my spreadsheet and then I'm gonna throw in the intermediate ring, which is the second from the top and check that one, and then I'm gonna throw in my oil control ring, which is the third one from the top, or the bottom ring on the piston. I'm gonna check that one, and I'm gonna do that all through each cylinder, one at a time, until I have everything charted out, and then uh, we'll see where we're at, and see what we have to file if we need to.
All right, well that did not go as expected, to be honest. I got them all measured up there. And this is what we're looking at. So these are all like really close, like we're within a thou spread across the board on all of those rings. Actually is super consistent. So then as far as a visual representation, that's what we're looking like. It's like really, really, really close. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not used to that. We're usually a lot farther off than that. This, this isn't even worth getting the ring filer out. So that does save me a bunch of time. I guess I'll throw the rings on the piston and we'll do the ring filing video another day on a different engine. And of course you can see up here I put my specs in. So 14 thou minimum on the uh, top ring and a max of 26 and we're like 19 almost across the board. So we're uh, looking like pretty good shape there, kind of right in the middle. 65 and 75 thou on the intermediate and we're hovering right around the bottom side of that spec, which I'm fine with because the top is only around the 20 thou mark. So 65 on the intermediate is lots in my opinion. I'm not exactly sure why International has the intermediate set so big, but that's how they have it. So I don't, don't have an answer for that one. And then the oil control is the same as the top 14 to 26. And typically whatever makes it past your top ring needs to be able to get all the way down into the, into the uh, crankcase. So you don't usually want your intermediate or your oil control to be less than what your top ring is. Once the combustion gets past the top ring, it needs to have a little bit of an easier path going down so that you don't damage the uh, ring grooves in your piston and stuff like that and blow all the oil off the cylinder wall with pressure. So in this case, we're looking very, very good that way. You know, we're 20 thou on the top ring and 26 on the bottom ring, 25. So yeah, I just don't think that it's worth working on this. This is about as good as it gets. Pretty accurate liner kits, I have to say. I'm pretty impressed, Interstate McBee. I'm pretty impressed. All right, so I got this stuff all reset up over here because over there is my vise, and that's very nice for holding these piston rod assemblies while you put the rings on. Um, we're gonna talk about those rings a little bit yet for installation. I'm gonna be using this blue point tool. This is the most annoying thing to use, but it's the best tool ever. And so I'll try and explain some of that yet too. So let me get set up, hang on a second. All right, so with pistons rings, this is kind of your last chance to make sure that you have everything right. And that's why I lay them out in order like this. You have your top ring, your intermediate, and your oil control. Now oil control is a really flimsy ring expands very easy and on the inside you have this spring part and that spring part has a gap in it right because it comes apart like that that wire is what holds this all together so when you put this together you want your springs gap opposite of the rings gap all right now on these ones they've given us a paint mark there which is going to make it real nice for lining it up if you line up the paint mark with that gap then that spring gap winds up being at the other side. So that's gonna come in handy a little bit later. Now with your top and your intermediate rings, these rings are not the same, okay? The thicknesses are often not the same and the shape of the ring is often not the same. And I don't know how well you can see this. I'll see if I can zoom the camera in there. So the top ring is like, I guess they would call that like a keystone shape. And the intermediate ring in this case has this, uh, one sort of notch in the ring so it it matters which is the top ring and the intermediate ring and it matters which way they get installed and it's up to you to figure that out on the specific engine that you're working on this one is labeled top r1 top so you know that that is r1 is ring one that's your top ring and this one is labeled top here and then i don't know what these other numbers mean they're a part number or whatever s2 maybe secondary second ring i'm not sure but anyway it's the intermediate goes there. You can also tell by those the keystone shape and the bevel. Um, if you got a book for the engine that you're working on, it'll tell you which way those go. In this case, top ring is the wedge-shaped one or the keystone-shaped ring. And this guy down here is going to be obviously your intermediate and the oil control is very, very obvious. No problem there. Now we'll get them set up in the vise there. Start with the number one piston. And again, when you put this in your vise, clean your vise first and you just want this to hold the the uh, rod assembly like you don't 
you want to pinch that thing on there so that you can have an atomic bomb come through and it's still going to hang on. We're not interested in that. We just want to kind of hold it a little bit. So you can set your piston skirt on the top. That kind of holds it. It's going to move back and forth this way a bit because it is on a, on a pin, right? But it's not going to fall off of there while you're monkeying with stuff, which is kind of the main thing. And I should explain this piston ring tool a little bit. It's very annoying to use because the handles are short. They're not very well ergonomic for your hands. Like, I just find they're very slippery and just, ah, it's very very frustrating to hang on to. They could have did these handles better in my opinion. Anyway, now the reason why I like to use these is because again with these piston rings, I, I, I covered this in my 4020 overhaul too, but you never want to expand that ring any more than is absolutely necessary to get it over top of the piston. You need to go enough that the corners of the of the of the ring don't scratch the piston as you go on there, but not so far that you stretch it or take the temper out of it or in extreme cases break it. Like these are brittle, they do break. So that's where I like this tool. This tool, the way it opens, it actually opens here, but it puts pressure on the outsides. So you get a more uniform stretch on that ring when you put it in there. It's just a, a minor detail type of thing. Lots of guys put these together with their fingers. I don't like that. I like to do it this way. This way I know I haven't compromised that ring at all when I put it together. So now when you stretch this, that whole ring stretches really nice and beautiful, but it's a little bit, takes a bit of technique to keep this held in there in the right spot and uh, yeah you just almost have to do it yourself to understand but so that's where that's at okay let me get set up with the camera here again and let's put rings on okay so the piston is in i'm gonna start with the oil control because logically right it's the one at the bottom so it has to go at least went down so you're gonna open that up like that and stick that thing over top and then you're gonna collapse it in that groove right now, this is a little hard to see sometimes, but being that they have that paint mark there, makes it really easy to uh, put our oil control ring in there. So this one I'm just gonna do with my hands because this thing spreads so easy. You spread it over top like that, get it over top of the spring, and then it's just automatically in place. But we don't have our paint mark there, so we gotta move it. I gotta move this a little bit. I wasn't watching when I put this on. Oh, now I really screwed up. Okay, let's start over. I'll pay attention to where my paint mark is this time. You feed it around on top of there. There's our paint mark, so we know that the spring's gap is on the back side. Spin that ring around, just make sure that it's sitting in there all the way. It's good. We're all good. Next up is the intermediate ring. Stick that guy in there. Whoop. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. It takes a little bit of finesse to use this tool. It's kind of a pain. You have to kind of hold it up against those tabs and hold it in so it doesn't pop out all at the same time. And then this thing is really hard to hang on to, this handle. It's just kind of a, I don't know. It's a love-hate thing. Okay, so now we're going to stretch this over top. Again, no more than you need to to just get it to fit over. Right, like that, into that second groove. And we're making sure that we have our top up so it's all aligned. And last ring is gonna be our top ring. Last ring is the first ring. Wow, I'm just having a hard time today. Must be too many people watching me again. There we go, okay. Same thing, we're gonna slide it over top. Just make really sure that we don't scratch that piston up. Now we want, the book says 120 degrees apart. And as usual, I will not be aligning any gaps with the pin bores. So we're gonna go there. This one's gonna go around here. Like that. And then this one is gonna go over here. Like that. Before we actually install it in the engine, we'll do the ring alignment and all that stuff. But now right now is a really good time to make really sure that we have, double check that we have our rod in the right place, right? So we want the long side on the opposite of the cam and we want the short side towards the cam. We got the cam side there. So we got the short side on the cam side. So that's what we want, perfect.
Okay, those pistons are ready to be installed. 